baptism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with mayors across the country to support the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service on April 9, 2013, therefore be it resolved that I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim April 9th 2013 as National Service <laughs> Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city, to thank those who serve, and to find ways to give back to their communities. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and printed the seal of the city <laughs> of North America. So uh, there's no one to actually present no that to me. Uh, so okay. I will, uh, but I did want to just uh, make that recognition public before the city council and acknowledge uh, the, the, the volunteerism and service that goes on in our community and communities around the nation. So moving on to uh, the next item uh, that I wanted to communicate with you about, I wanted to give you an update on uh, the FY 2014 budget. Uh, as you know, uh, well, last night I completed uh, a series of uh, town hall budget meetings that I've been holding uh, around the city. Uh, talking with hundreds of residents at, 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 at across those various meetings um, and discussing the challenges that uh, we're facing in the current uh, in the current budget season uh, I've got some great questions got some great feedback um, and uh, and of course over the course of that time we've been continuing to work uh, as a financial team uh, to try to uh, look at all of our revenues, all of our expenditures, uh, take a look at some of the big cost drivers. Obviously, I updated you about health insurance at our last meeting. Um, but we still, as we stand today, are facing a significant uh, gap. Uh, uh, today, it's, we are at about $1.4 million is still the working gap that, that we're on as of today. Um, we still have, uh, you know, one sort of one more number that we'll be watching very carefully, and that is the um, the House, uh, the House of Representatives will be uh, releasing their budget next Wednesday, uh, and it's fairly clear um, from all the indications we're hearing that it will be uh, dramatically different from, or at least uh, uh, different in terms of the way it will approach revenues uh, than the governor's budget. Uh, the speaker unveiled a, a, a plan uh, earlier this week focused on transportation uh, that took a very different look at how revenues would be raised uh, and a much more modest revenue package uh, than the governor's plan uh, and was focusing uh, not on income taxes or sales taxes but more on gasoline taxes and, and cigarette taxes and some other consumption taxes. Uh, so uh, we are going to be watching that number very carefully because we believe when we get the revised cherry sheet uh, that the uh, Chapter 70 and local aid numbers uh, that contained in that budget will probably be uh, the, the best working number of what we can expect uh, for those uh, particular uh, revenue streams. I don't expect them to uh, increase significantly, particularly in Chapter 70, because Chapter 70 is fairly formula driven uh, and so it's unlikely that that's going to change. Local aid, uh, there's a possibility we've we've actually downgraded our local aid projection because much of what the governor proposed was based on his tax increases and now those will likely not be on the table at the same level. So we'll see what the uh, what the governor proposes. Um, so that's where we are. That's the sort of the last number uh, that we're waiting for. Um, and I do have to say that at most or all of the meetings that I've been at, uh, these budget meetings, including not only the budget meetings, but uh, a, a recent series of school committee meetings, uh, people have been expressing deep concerns about the cuts uh, that we will be facing uh, in the coming year. Uh, in order to close the uh, in order to close the budget gap without any without additional revenues, uh, I will be forced to make significant cuts in both the city and schools, uh, including the elimination of uh, 22 full-time equivalent positions. Uh, we'll be making uh, particularly those cuts will be across general government, across public safety, across the schools. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the schools because some of the cuts we're making there are uh, unprecedented um, and I believe could be irreparable 
uh, elimination of you know, busing to the high school, elimination of arts and theater, uh, elimination of music programs, technology programs, uh, and, and larger class sizes in, in some of our schools uh, because of the fact that we're making these cuts. Um, so with that in mind, I really, I, I, I believe that it's my obligation and my duty uh, to put forward sort of the final option that we have for uh, generating local revenue. Uh, so I wanted to inform the City Council tonight uh, that at your next meeting, uh, and I will be filing an order next week, I will be submitting to you a, uh, an order calling for a June 25th, 2013 special municipal election uh, for the purpose of a Proposition 2 and a half override ballot question. Uh, I, we will be working over the next week to look at the numbers, particularly looking at that House number, and trying to uh, finalize what we believe about where the budget gap stands. Uh, and we will be um, trying to put together a plan to show how increased local revenues generated through a Proposition 2 and a half override uh, could be uh, structured uh, to provide us a sustainable path over the next three to five years uh, to be able to meet the needs of our city budget and the services and the schools and education that we need to provide. So I wanted to inform you of that tonight. I'm not obviously putting forward a formal proposal, uh, but I wanted to sort of put you on notice. And you know, my office has been inundated with calls and with emails about this question, about whether, uh, and, and frankly, people asking me to give them this option. Uh, to be able to vote on it. So it's obviously not a step I uh, thought I would be making when I uh, raised my right hand a year ago. Uh, it's not something I take lightly, uh, something I relish, uh, but I do believe it is my duty, uh, given the cuts uh, that we're facing, to pre present this option to the City Council and ultimately to the voters of Northampton. Uh, so that is my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Obviously, I'll be providing more, more information for your next meeting, um, but, uh, but I wanted to make that public statement tonight uh, and uh, let the council know where I'm headed uh, in this particular issue. Counselor. Yes, Myra. Um, you are saying at our next city council meeting, you will be bringing in a proposal for us city councilors for a proposition two and a half to place it on the ballot. That is and correct. that proposition two and a half will occur the month of June of this 2013. That is correct. There is a, um, as you all know, there is a special Senate election scheduled for Tuesday, June 25th uh, in, in the Commonwealth. So we are holding an election on that day. Uh, we're required to hold an election on that day. Uh, so this will be an order to um, hold a, a local municipal election, a special municipal election. Uh, for the purpose of this one question that we'll put for the voters about raising additional revenues. So that is a special election. What is the cost for that? Well, the cost will be, uh, we will be, and this is the, the legislature uh, uh, did enact uh, special legislation uh, knowing that they were holding these two state elections, on a, one on April 30th and one on June 25th. They did hold, they did pass legislation allowing cities and towns to move local elections to one of those dates. So towns that were holding uh, their normal April municipal elections have been moving them to April 30th uh, to consolidate them, to not create confusion or dilution of, of the electorate uh, having elections a week apart. Um, so we would be moving it to the 25th. We would be responsible for the costs of printing the local ballot. Um, obviously, the state is printing the, uh, the state ballot. We would have to print the local ballot. And we would obviously, well, we, we are providing most of the manpower anyway for the state election. We don't really, as you've heard the city clerk describe, we don't really get reimbursed much for that. Um, it's very minimal. Uh, so we will be having to provide, uh, you know, the manpower, people power to carry out the election as well. Uh, so there's not a figure there, like ten thousand. Don't I can ask I can ask the city clerk, and I'm sure she can give me a figure. I know that um, well a little bit different election, but when we held a when we did something comparable in the fall, uh, you may recall during the federal election, which is a much larger election, larger turnout, probably many more ballots being printed. Um, 
uh, we estimated that the costs were in the range of about twenty about twenty thousand dollars possibly less and we've actually uh, working with uh, representative cocott have filed special legislation uh, well <coughs> filing a budget order with other towns who were in the same situation we were last fall uh, seeking reimbursement uh, from the state uh, for that particular election um, as you may recall I the Secretary of State and I had a, a difference of opinion about um, how well the deadlines were communicated um, and so uh, we believe that that was one that the state should have allowed us to do but in this case actually no towns are being allowed to uh, are being allowed to piggyback onto the state ballot but they are being allowed to hold a local election on the same day okay. so we're going to avail ourselves of that particular option I but just I just wanted that explained exactly to the taxpayers of exactly. the reasons why it will not be held in November and, well, and the other obvious reason for doing it in June is, is you know, I'm going to be presenting a budget to you on May 17th that will include the cuts that, that we've put forth that I have to make. And, uh, and, and then obviously, if depending on the decision of the voters in June, uh, there'll either be revenues that can be added back into the budget or not. Uh, so if we don't uh, have this question before the voters before July 1st, uh, then the cuts will go into effect. But you still could not do it in November because it's a state election. Uh, no, it's a municipal election in November. What I'm saying is that um, uh, you know, school starts on September 1st, and we will be laying off you know, 16 to 17 teachers uh, when school starts. And it will be very difficult at that point if we have an override in November uh, to, uh, to avert that. that, that so it's, it's really about our July 1st budget deadline. Uh, Thank you. And as in past overrides, we've held them in June because of the uh, because of the budget cycle. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Spector. In terms of the process that needs to take place to put this on the ballot, what would be the latest date that you could put the over that you could come to us and we could still get it on the ballot? On that date? I have in talked June. with the city clerk about this. Um, I did I did uh, discuss this with the city clerk uh, because obviously she's the one and her staff who would have to carry out this special election. And um, uh, we discussed late May as a possibility, um, uh, uh, but uh, the thought of holding one election a month. No, no it's not the election. Months, you're 35 days. 30 it's 35 days. So I was asking, months. you're planning on coming to the next meeting. That is correct. And there will, but, be plenty, but you, there will be plenty of time. But if you didn't come to the next meeting, but came to the meeting after that or one other, there would still be time to put it on? Uh, barely, because okay. it's uh, a 35 day window. Uh, and so we would be needing to do it. The other factor is I, I also wanted to give the city clerk time to prepare to find uh, the, the, to, to do the work that she would need to do if the city council chooses to, to take this action. I was just that two of us will not be at the next meeting. Okay. Um, I know of two, and I just want okay. to make sure that. Um, well, certainly, uh, that certainly, you know, that's a decision the council can make. I mean, I can tell you that statutorily, there is time if it if it extended further. I mean, right now the the, the April 18th and then May 4th would be your next okay. meeting. Mm -hmm. I would have to get out a calendar and count it, but it's a 35 days uh, okay. requirement. But that's the statutory requirement. I was more concerned about the other okay. issues around the city clerk. And mayor, it may still be fine to bring it next time. I was just raising that to yes. understand it. Yes, okay. More Any other questions, Councilor Tacey? <coughs> And I know you really don't know just exactly how much the number <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, obviously, uh, and this was actually a question that someone asked me last night about an override uh, at the Florence Community Center that, you know, well, you know, what happens if you do an override for, you know, $1.4 million? And the question was, well, then we fill the gap for this year, but the next year, uh, you know, we've all seen the math. We've seen the way the you know, revenues versus expenditures, uh, that curve, uh, will be right back where we are in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the, that equation. So my plan is, and I've been working with the finance director on doing some financial modeling, uh, looking at um, growth in, in various budget areas and trying to project a, a reasonable growth pattern over the next three to five years and then trying to create a revenue scenario that we could uh, raise revenue to be able to sustain that over that period. 
Um, and that would include, and, and potentially, we've discussed even uh, uh, you know, creating sort of an override, uh, uh, sorry, I'm uh, capital, uh, sort of an override stabilization fund, if you will, uh, where we could actually show the taxpayers that where this money would be held as, as a way to then use it um, over time. <coughs> do, so, do you have a, in your head, do you have a formula for distribution? What, how much would go where, half to the school, half to the general fund? Uh, those are the kinds of things <coughs> I want to really work, I, I need to continue to work out and be clear about. Obviously, I mean, it's no, we, we all know that the schools represent, you know, 50 to 60 percent of our budget in terms of the uh, in terms of what we uh, spend, and they have the largest number of employees. So, my you know, I, I think that you can assume easily assume that that a percentage of that would go to the schools. A, a yeah. large percentage of it would go to the schools. Yeah. But I also <clears throat> am concerned about public safety and about uh, DPW and general government, and uh, and so that's what we'll be trying to work on. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Barge. Yes. Um, Councilor Spector, I heard you say something about two of you would not be available in the next two weeks. So if we hold this back, who is to say who else is not going to be here That's the true. following two weeks? No, I was just raising that. It's fine. So I don't have a problem about it coming here in our next two weeks. I think the mayor needs to know where we're standing with it, and we need to move on. And again, I can Thank do the. I can I can do some additional. Uh, I can have some additional discussions with the city clerk about the actual timing. And obviously, uh, you know, we have the option of a special meeting if if it were needed. We, that that's that's happened before. It's fine. So it's just raising that. If there was a if there was an issue about quorum or something like that. Or and just as a process question too, I'm assuming it's a two, two readings. It is a council order that would yeah. require two readings. So, um, yeah. uh, so uh, you know, obviously your rules. Uh, stipulate that and so I would leave that to the discretion of the council. Council Freeman Day. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I think it's important to come to the to the, the voters with this uh, proposal and I think uh, during budget hearings it will be very important to uh, to see the discre the, the possible uh, filling that an override will uh, will accomplish or mm -hmm. may accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, that's I expect it is going to be a rather um, morose budget season, uh, budget hearings rather, and I think it's important that the uh, the council and the public will be able to see uh, in in each budget presentation the uh, the possible uh, fixes that uh, that an override might uh, might uh, might um, apply. And 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 obviously, as we as we put together, I know the school department um, has already done this in terms of their budget process. Uh, uh, have been putting together kind of an outline of these are the areas that they will be cutting. These are the programs. These are the, the I mean, because they have to actually make very specific cuts. And in their case, many because many of them are personnel cuts, they have to do notifications to people, um, and of and it affects scheduling. So. We'll be presenting that as sort of a as part of our of the budget that I overall budget that I present, um, uh, sort of a list of the items, the services. And again, one of the things I've stressed at all of these budget meetings is, you know, the gap is not about we're not talking about adding new services or adding new people or adding new programs. The gap is between providing the same level of service from FY13 to FY14, um, and the fact that you know when you've got Three million dollars in expenditures to meet that level service, and you're only looking at a million, you know, million and a half of revenues. It's just that's that's where the uh, that's where the gap occurs. And and again, I point out, as I pointed out at these other meetings, we made cuts in FY13. I mean, we made cuts and layoffs on the city side. There were cuts on the school side. Uh, so this has been uh, this is uh, you know this is not something that has just occurred. I think we've reached a stage now where. The gap has reached a point um, uh, where we're, I believe, we're facing the level of cuts, particularly in the schools, that this merits uh, taking it to the voters and asking them uh, uh, to decide this. Because um, I don't want to make these cuts uh, uh, and, and without the, really without the community's input on it. Councilor Schwartz. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that, um, well, 
thank you for these budget forums and to let you know that um, I have gotten a lot of feedback from my constituents thanking you, I mean, through me, and just sort of talking about how useful they have been to really understand the state of our budget. And I just wanted to pass on those thanks and thank you directly. Thank you, and I, and I wanted to thank the counselors who've come to some of them, and I appreciate your presence there. And uh, uh, I know you've sat through this presentation many times, and the ending never changes. It's always the same unhappy ending, but, uh, but I do feel it's important. And, and I also have tried to point out at these hearings that you know, we have been working very hard since the beginning of my administration to really work on efficiency, on we've merged departments, we've applied for grants uh, to do regionalization. I've put in place you know, spending restriction policies, comp time policies, cell phone policies, take home car policies. I've, I've been tried to be very responsible with uh, taxpayers' money. And so again, this is not a step that I relish or I take lightly or <coughs> that I'd see myself <coughs> Uh, doing about a year ago, but this is where we are, and I believe it's uh, it's the, it's my duty to bring this forward to you. Yeah, I want to um, <clears throat> remind everybody and, and the mayor also that <clears throat> during the last the two million dollar override that was passed in two thousand and ten, nine, nine, excuse me, <clears throat> the there was one particular resident on my ward that was against the two million dollars. He thought it should have been four million. He was pretty adamant about it at all the meetings. <clears throat> and, um, <coughs> I, and I opposed the $4 million at the time because I didn't want to send that much money out there <clears throat> at once because who knows, it could have been a $4 million override last time, but we could still be looking for another override this time. So that in mind, um, that's why I asked I how much yeah. <clears throat> and I, it was not to go overboard. And, and, and but my concern, if I give you a number tonight, he's going to put it on the front page of the paper tomorrow. So I want to make sure, and again, I, that house number is really important to me uh, because, because I've been, again, trying to be very careful about putting out the exact numbers around our revenue and our expenditures. And I do think waiting to see what that house budget number is an important part of understanding the full gap. Plus, we want to do some more modeling. Uh, financial modeling about how this would play out to answer your very concern that, that where this would leave us over the next two, three to five years. And I know that the announcement must have been leaked to the press. That's why Chad's here. He's writing frivolously. Oh, he's well, let, let the record show that the mayor would indicate Chad Kane, and I should also point out that Chad Kane is here all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's his beat. He yes, pulled the short is. straw. He's from the Daily Hampshire Gazette. <laughs> Um, any other questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, and obviously I'll be staying for the finance <coughs> committee portion as well uh, to talk about that. some of the orders. <laughs> Up next, we have uh, presentations. Uh, beautifying the Commons and Planting Community. No, hang on nope. a second. Nope. Oh, announcements, Where's please. Sorry, premature. <laughs> yes, I know. Right, okay. The. Um, one minute announcements, Councillors. Uh, Councillor Tacy. Yes, the um, the Board of Public Works um, has indicated at our building committee meeting that they would like to make a presentation to this council on their building plans at Locust Street, and they would like to get on the agenda for the next meeting if that's possible. That is possible. I, a request, and then Councillor Carney and I are on the building committee, and that was their. Well, and I won't be present at the next meeting, right. so if it's pushed off the following, that's fine by me as well. Okay. Councilor Spector. Yes, on Monday, April 15th, um, at 5 o'clock at the Smith, uh, this is the campus center downstairs in the conference room, Paradise Conference Room, for Ward 2 residents, actually anybody can come if they'd like to come, we're going to have a meeting about any issues, concerns people have in Ward 2 in the adjacent area about parking, on uh, the adjacent streets with Smith. Um, it, there's no specific agenda. It's just to try and have a yearly meeting to just see if there are concerns. So again, that is Monday, April 15th, 5 o'clock. That's at the Smith Campus Center in the Paradise Conference Room, which is downstairs in the Conference Center. Council LaBarge. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to hold this up. Um, this was held this week. And it was um, the National Child Abuse Awareness Month. 
and it was in regards to raising the children's memorial flag and the reading of the mayoral proclamation. Um, and I want to tell you, I was very proud to be there and whoever wanted one of these, and I said I needed one to bring to city council. And if you can see, our mayor also has the blue ribbon on, and that is in order of supporting raising the children's memorial flag. So that's that, and that is the flyer that every one of you counselors got an email on on an invite. Now, for this Saturday, April 6th, at the Clarendon Hotel and Conference Center is um, the Municipal Conference by Senator Rosenberg, and that starts at 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, conference. On Monday, April 8th, from 3 to 4, at the Northampton Senior Center on Conn Street, the PVTA will be hosting a paratransit rider meeting, and that will be an update on the five-day advance reservation policy. And also, Wednesday, May 1st, from 8.45 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the Old Superior Court in Northampton on Gothic Street, Hampshire County will be hosting their Law Day, and it will be Realizing the Dream, Equality for All, with keynote speaker Judge Carhart. And there will also be a, an award given to the Spoken Word Student Scholarship presentation and a court tour of the District Superior Probate Family and Juvenile Courts. Thank you. One more. Oh, uh, sure. Um, also, the fourth annual Living Wage Week celebration, which will be Tuesday, April 9th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Unitarian Society. And um, the special guest is Peter Ratcliffe, professor of history um, and music by Ben Kroskup. And I think, Bill, you know him very well. And that was what we all received by email also. Thank you. Um, I have to announce that the city clerk's computer was crushed <laughs> by, by an email from MIS, oddly enough. The, um, but consequently, what happened is that she will not be able to post the, the agendas in a timely fashion for the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations and the Committee on Elections, Rules, Ordinances, and Orders and Claims. So consequently, they will have to be rescheduled. Um, and and you can work that out with the city clerk and so we can do we can work that out but I'm sorry a council clerk sorry council clerk that would be mary <laughs> supposed to hit me uh, also the uh, veterans council of northampton has invited us to participate in the memorial day parade that will be monday may 27th this year uh up to florence um, nice one. Looking forward to that and hoping that it will be sunny. I understand they have a, an August speaker uh, scheduled for that in, in, in the person of Councilor Casey, Ward 7. Thank you. Right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was honored to be asked. It was, it's a great honor. Um, all right. I'm sorry, Felix. That was the premature announcement. But right now we have a presentation on the Beautifying the Commons and uh, Plenty of the Community. Uh, Felix Lufkin is the co-chair of Help Yourself. And, and actually, everyone else who comes up can identify themselves. That would be great. And Jessica Tanner, I live in Ward 2 in Northampton. Thank you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Wendy Mesterly. Uh, I live in East Hampton, but I am a, uh, work in Northampton. Thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. So howdy, thanks for having us. Um, who should I point at to proceed the thingy? Okay. She's, she's the slide master. She's the remote control of the, the buses. All right, we can, we can go along then. So uh, it is said that the best time to plant a fruit tree is 20 years ago. And that's something I'm hoping we can all keep in the back of our minds over the next 20 years. Here we see a picture of uh, a pergola in Pulaski Park, circa 1915. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but that guy there is uh, tending vegetable plantings that were there at that time. Um, so we can go even one, one forward. Yep. <coughs> hmm. Well, we are here to. Uh, Where'd you get that? Do you want to press one more time there? Oh. A couple more times. Um, Help Yourself is a nonprofit here in Northampton. We started uh, this past summer. 
We are volunteers of all ages, community gardeners, five college students, high school students, permaculture designers, and concerned citizens. And our mission and vision is uh, in Northampton transformed uh, with the under underutilized public spaces in abun into abundantly edible landscapes. And we are also here to educate the public about growing and consuming vegetables, herbs, and fruits. Okay. So our vision. Um, our vision is a Northampton bursting with food, uh, accessible food, local food, free for everyone. We can stay here, that's good. Um, a Northampton that sets a trend in the valley and in the state uh, by demonstrating what's possible when the community comes together in support of the most important issue of all, which is food. And we also envision a fresh new paradigm of land use, um, ultimately saving the city money. So our pilot project this spring is the Manhan Rail Trail Connector, also known as the Nagel Walkway. And that's between Pleasant Street and Conn Street here in downtown. Uh, it's seven or 800 feet long. And we are imagining the uh, countless fence posts planted with grapes and other vine fruit, the sunny slopes <coughs> planted with apples, plums, and pears, um, raised beds for vegetables and herbs free for anyone to pick, and signage which encourages folks to harvest as they would. Uh, in addition, we've identified over a hundred miniature zones that are underutilized by the city, which the city has to pay to mow and maintain, little scraps of land that are just grass or gravel, and we'd like to put fruit trees and raised beds and flowers and pollinator habitat everywhere we can. Um, we're envisioning um, a transformation of the landscape around town, and in so doing, involving the community from youth and high school students this summer at NHS and North Star, five college summer interns, and community volunteers who can all combine to help take on the, resp the shared responsibility of the land we live in. Here are some examples of places around town. Uh, these pictures are in Ward 3, and we just would love to plant there. How are we doing on time? Ta-da. So, so next we want to talk about the concerns. So we're aware that there are some concerns of municipalities. For the first, falling edibles can be messy, but some ornamentals are also messy. I know where I live on West Street, there were uh, lots of the chestnuts on the sidewalk last year, which are potentially a falling hazard, and those are not edible, they're poisonous. Uh, there will be, you know, edible fruit is desirable because you can eat it versus well, the ornamentals just become waste on the ground that you have to clean up. We'll have lots of signs around to encourage the picking of edible plants, so there will not be lots of edibles on the ground making a mess. And next. So in general, ornamentals require just as much maintenance as edibles. We expect that community volunteers will, will organize them to harvest, prune, mulch, and maintain the edible plants. Permaculture techniques in general reduce maintenance by using companion planting, ground covers, and mulching. And ultimately, the city will save money by reducing the burden of mowing all that grass. Next. So there's concern about contamination from car exhaust, dog waste, etc. But farm fields are more exposed to wild animals and their waste, farm equipment, and chemical pollutants than urban gardens. I got in touch with Pam Warhurst, who started the incredible edible project in Todd Morden, England, which inspired all of us here in North, well, many of us here in Northampton. And I said, Pam, you know, I asked Pam, so how did you deal with car exhaust? The, you know, how far away from the roads do you plant? And she responded by saying, I find it hilarious that most commercial crops come with a history of chemical use, and as for collection, tractors, fumes, transport, and plastic packaging. Anyway, our approach is that it's not just about food to be picked, although sharing and kindness is key. It's about starting conversations about local food. So another concern, um, 
you know, animal urine, but urine is actually a fertilizer. It's high in nitrogen and good for plants. We expect to use raised beds, which will discourage contamination from waste from animals and also allow accessibility to people with differing abil you know, different abilities. So perhaps a better question is, how can we reduce the negative impact of car exhaust and other street pollutants on the health of urban residents and their potential downtown food sources? So I'm just going to go through some of the benefits of public edibles. Um, and there's an example on each slide of um, projects around the world around and close local to us. Um, so public edibles increase local food security, accessibility, equality, and literacy, knowledge about food. This is a picture of um, Pam Warhurst, who Jessica um, read a quote from in a raised bed um, at the railroad station in Todd Morden, England. You can see it's raised so it's accessible to wheelchairs and all that is just free food to share. Um, public edibles generate su <coughs> public support for healthy communities. This is an image of Seeds of Solidarity, so solidarity in Orange, Massachusetts, um, not too far from here. And they have raised beds at their health center, um, encouraging healthy um, eating. Um, and we would encourage bicyclists and cyclists to, to ride past and eat healthy fruits as they go along. Um, public edibles provide educational and volunteer opportunities for all ages. This is the Portland Fruit Tree Project in Portland, Oregon. Um, and they organize volunteers. They've har the, um, over 541 volunteers have gathered 39,000 pounds of fruit in Oregon in the past few years um, because they're to they're there to learn, they're there to eat, um, and nothing goes to waste. Um, public edibles build soil, biodiversity, and pollinator habitat. Um, this is Food Forest Farm in Holyoke, Massachusetts, right down the street. They've converted a tenth of an acre um, underutilized barren um, poor soil um, lot into an um, edible paradise. And those are pawpaws and pollinators. Um, Public edibles create a destination for tourism and business. This is, again, an image of incredible edible Todd Morden. These are um, tourists from France that came to visit uh, for three days um, and <clears throat> to learn and, and take tours of the, the city. Um, public edibles um, promote aesthetic beauty and public awareness. Um, that's an image from Houston of downtown of container gardens in a public works spot um, and each floor has their own garden um, <coughs> edibles decrease our carbon footprint and sequester co2 in trees um, mitigating climate change and most importantly they inspire individuals and local communities everywhere to grow more food um, and that's an image of my garden. Um, Help Yourself So Far has raised over $5,000 um, through a successful Kickstarter campaign, as well as received a $1,000 grant through Ritual Arts Collective. We've tested the soils along the bike path. We've installed raised beds that are ready for planting in the spring. Planted 18 fruit trees at public schools around the valley. Um, and we lead volunteer groups twice a week to Triple Brook Farm in Southampton, Massachusetts. Um, and we have organized a spring perennial plant sale. Um, so if anyone wants any plants, let us know. Uh, perennial fruits and berries and things like that. Um, and the next slide is an example of all the people that have shown support. Um, Jessica, do you want to? Okay. Oh, so I just want to mention a couple. So Rod uh, Hostel, I sat down with him. He and his friend are interested, Andrew Putnam, are interested in planting shade trees around the city. So I sat down with him to see if it would be possible for us to collaborate. And he said, well, it would be great if you could share with us, you know, what fruit trees might make sense to plant near the shade trees. So we're going to, uh, you know, create a collaboration with him. 
I videoed Tom Sullivan last year in Turner's Falls. He has his pollinators welcome business. He consults to help people create pollinator friendly uh, little oases and he's willing to consult with us for free to help us along the bike path this summer. Um, do we have one more minute maybe for some comments from the petition, uh, petition that we just did? Um, sure. And the, I, uh, the, if any of the councilors have questions that they want to ask? Yeah. Uh, Councilor Tacey. The, <coughs> you would outline the area from um, at the Northampton Brewery to Pleasant Street. Yes. And it is probably one of the most active dog walks in the city. Yes. And I'm just I'm very curious as to how you would police this. <clears throat> or how, how would you? How would you keep track of this? How would you? You're saying in terms of dog waste or dog, yeah. dogs interference. Um, the vast majority of our intentions with that area are grapes and fruit trees, and thankfully dogs aim down. So. That's what we'll go with. There will be some raised beds. Hopefully they'll be high enough and plenty of signs. We just hope that the same courtesy people have to police their own dogs on the street and they'll exercise there. It, it should be noted that the, they're obliged to by city ordinance to, uh, to clean up after their dog and keep their dog on leash even on yeah. the dog walks. And, and that being said, take a walk down there and look on the sides of that. True. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions? Councilor Speck. Just a comment of thank you for doing this. Oh. It's an exciting project. Thanks for hearing Glad us. you guys are taking it on. Um, so we did a, a number of petitions this, fall, uh, this uh, what is it, spring? Last two weeks. Last two weeks. <laughs> two week long petition. Um, we had an online version which got around 300 signatures and a paper one which got somewhere between two and 300 signatures. So all told there's a bunch. Um, there was almost 2,000 people who supported the Kickstarter donation. So there's public support. A lot of the uh, folks who signed the petition had inspiring comments, and we'll just end on some of the highlights of that. Um, Ms. Evie Scott, um, who lives here in town, says, I like the bike path a lot, and it will be even better when it's lined with beautiful edible plants and trees. Why, we, why can't we have this everywhere? This is a simple and powerful move towards environmental and community sustainability. I strongly support putting food producing plants and trees in public places. Brian Long suggests to the members of the city council, this is a no brainer folks. All plants are beautiful, but not all are edible. People need food all the time, everywhere. Invest wisely in edibles and share them with your voters. Um, Ms. Devin Kelly, also, also here in town. Bill, as a lifelong resident of our town, I must say the time is now. This is the best idea that I could imagine to improve the atmosphere of Northampton. Um, and how about this, Emerald Levick, um, who lives in Florence. This has been a dream of mine since I lived in Northampton. Now you can make it a reality. I would be so proud to have any part in fruit growing along the bike trail and in public places. Grow food everywhere in Northampton. Okay, and we, so we put together some examples of just to show that edibles can be not only uh, beneficial in terms of eating, but can be beautiful. This is a rosemary plant with some lettuce and kale planted around the, the base, some lemon grass with some uh, and lettuce and a flower. Uh, Councilor Tacey, yeah, I just, my questions weren't in opposition to your plan. I think your plan is a great plan. I just um, just wonder how the implementation will yeah, go when... I've seen it. It's it's scary sometimes. So we'll try to... <laughs> yeah, well, that's something we're working on. Where is the location of the one in Holyoke? Look like the High Street area. Is that... If you, uh, if you answer, Felix, can you do it at the microphone oh, sure. so that they can... Um, which location are you referring to? You said there was one in Holyoke, Holyoke Mass? Um, I saw it on the slide. There's a, the yeah. farm in Holyoke. Oh, yeah. the Forest Farm. That's yeah. on... Um, I want to say Brown Street. Yeah. It's yeah. some. Fo it's mm -hmm. they've been building the diversity of their like point one backyard for the past decade. Mm -hmm. There's like 500 species now. They're they've written a number of books. They've been in the New York Times. They're in the New York Times. Yeah. 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 Okay. On Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Council Labarge. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. I think this is the right way to go. Uh -huh. And um, just looking at these pots when they were brought in tonight, I was really impressed with that. But I think when you're saying 
growing natural food here, it's the right way to go. Thank you. You should smell it before you, before you leave. It's, it's very nice. I already did because okay. I do have. I've been lucky spot. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Councilor Freeman Daniels. Hi. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Uh, we, I know we spoke um, the other day on the phone. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, I know this is a presentation, but I want to know what's going on with, your, with Help Yourself as far as getting approval to plant in these, in these public spaces. Have you been to the, I would imagine, well, I, I understand that walkway used to be the parking division, but now it might be under the Board of Public Works. I, I actually don't know. Sure, yeah. And where, and where are you with that process? Because I can imagine that the Board of Public Works um, being pretty strapped for resources is not going to relish uh, sweeping apples off of the bike path when they don't have to do it now, um, if, in fact, they're going to have to do that. Gotcha. Um, I believe the uh, auspices of that place fall under DPW or BPW or some combination, and we have talked with them uh, over the past, I want to say, 10 months. We've had a bit of a runaround between various bureaucracies, but finally ended up with um, the highway superintendent, Rich Parasoliti, and he said, idea sounds awesome. Of course, we have some logistical concerns, primarily, please just convince us that it won't increase our uh, maintenance, which is already hard for us to accomplish. And that was primarily about snowing, uh, snow plowing, grass mowing, and just like path safety. And they gave us some guidelines to work with, and we're in this tenuous limbo of presenting and having those plans approved, um, which would basically extend the row of existing planted by the city ornamental fruit trees, which do ironically drop uh, edible crab apples on the path anyway. Um, these would be farther back, so nothing would drop on the path or stick tentacles into the path. And um, all the raised beds are out of path out of the way of the snow plow. So they gave us guidelines to work with, in other words. They didn't give us a green light for everywhere in the city, hence the, hence starting with a little pilot project. So the first I heard of this project is when Jessica came before the Energy Commission, which seemed like an interesting place to start, given the fact that there was, we don't have a, we actually do have an agricultural committee, but the, um, and, uh, Ned Huntley is a member of that committee, and we had we had discussed at, at that point we were trying to work out one, what the best approach was, and eventually to come make the, this presentation they made today, and to increase a community awareness of the project and the prospects for the project and the and the aspirations for the project, all of which I I uh, I think I, I get a sense that you go with our blessings. So um, uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, Jessica, Felix, Wendy. Thank you both, all three, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing um, the abundance on public property that we can all benefit from. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're. Yeah, I'll take an apple. I'll take an apple. Sure. Yeah. And we already have one. Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, announcing we're waiving council rules of uh, disallowing Because <laughs> it's part of a presentation. Makes 10. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you very much. Kind of. Excellent. Thank you. <coughs> All right, what's next? We're. Oh, just one. Well, okay, we're up to the approval of minutes. Move to approve. Thank you. All Aye. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Well, yeah, it's. You wanna, why don't we do that? We we have a eight uh, eight o'clock special election to be held, but that doesn't occur for five more minutes. So why don't we go to the reappointments, uh, which are uh, which is a referral for uh, Natalia Munoz uh, for uh, to the committee on appointments and evaluations. <coughs> And this is for the uh, Human Rights Commission. Is this a reappointment? It's that's a, a reappointment. That's a reappointment. So we got to suspend Rule 30 because there's no reasons for. I'll accept that as a motion. Yes. Second. Second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Um, 
So uh, move to approve. I, I, thank you. Second. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I should I should ask for it if it doesn't come up. Okay. So there's a motion to approve the appointment of Natalia Munoz uh, for a term to expire December 2015 to the Human Rights Commission. Is there any discussion? Uh, I just want to read what the chair of the committee, Carol Reinhardt, wrote to me on the inquiry. She wrote that Natalie brings an important perspective to the commission, Natalia, to the commission, thank you, and participates actively in the meeting discussions. She has participated in complaint subcommittee work and is a strong voice for the importance of the commission stand where complaints are concerned. There were a couple of questions because she had missed um, a few meetings this year, uh, but Carol also outlined why that was the case. One was for personal reason at the last moment, and she believes two of those were because she had uh, family issues and had to go to Puerto Rico. So I'm not at all concerned with the fact that she did have to miss some meetings, and she's a member in good standing and well supported by the committee. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Natalia has been re reappointed to the Human Rights Commission. These are all now coming up. All, all the remainders are to refer. Gwen Agna um, for uh, this is also this is all referral for the Human Rights Commission. And Gwen Agna, Julio Capo, uh, Emin Crawley Edge, Tanzania uh, Kenan Eckerly. And yes, okay. And those Look, are all to be referred to appointments, appointments and evaluations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> now we have another. And we have one other. We have a new appointment to the Northampton Housing Partnership, and that's Alex Akers. And that's a term to expire uh, April 2016, filling a vacancy. Move to refer to appointments and evaluations. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then, where are we at here? We got. Most. We have 30 seconds left <laughs> to the election. 30 seconds. Public safety minutes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 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 would someone like to ex uh, move to accept the uh, minutes? Okay. Yeah, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And look at that. We're fast. Seconds to go. Um, right. We're at, the, uh, there's an 8 p.m. scheduled special election, which is occurring right in papers to 1 8. All right. Well, this is for the Board of Assessors, one member, three year term to expire March 2016. Timothy Fulham seeks re election. And Mr. Fulham is present here in the council. If, uh, if, but I'd like to hear an accept, I'd accept a motion. So moves. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, do anyone, uh, Councilor Kimmy Daniels? Are we in, uh, is the council do in the business of uh, elections? Yes. For, for these multi member bodies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Pursuant to the new charter? Yes. Always has. This is the, uh, Mary informs me that this is the last one according to the charter. Yeah, this, this one. This is the, the final cleanup, Mr. Fulham, has the, the honor of being our last election in council election. Uh, councilors have any questions or to proceed with the election? And I believe this is a roll call. We move to recognize him. We have finally well, recognize yes. him. Would you like to talk with him? Okay. Uh, there's a motion to recognize Mr. Fulham. Second. It's been seconded by Councilor LaBarge. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Fulham, if you could please step up to the microphone, please. Good evening, uh, counselors. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much for, for coming for this election. Uh, Thanks for, thank for doing it. <laughs> oh, I've enjoyed the position. Yep. And I look forward to another three years. Good. Excellent. You have a daunting charge, Mr. Fulham, uh, assessing properties, that, which is essentially is you appraising people's properties and, and assigning a tax value and so i understand that that maybe sometimes people would greet with open arms and other times probably not be so excited if they if they were to know that you were evaluating their house at least from the exterior but all the work that i and i know council murphy uh served in this capacity at one point and um did so ably, and you've done a, a very good job thank you he's limping 
It came out relatively unscathed. <laughs> Seems to have survived even won an election or two. So it's <laughs> uh, Councilor Barge. Um, we all, all of us counselors received a um, letter from our principal assessor, Joan Serafin, who is here this evening. And I think it really speaks well of you and your experience and how you're furthering going on with your education as an assessor. I want to thank you um, for being here in the city since the year of 2007. You're welcome. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. So the assessor would you like to recognize the assessor I would like to recognize the assessor motion to recognize the assessor is there a second second All in favor aye. aye aye joan would you like to step up to the podium too aye. it's worked out very well with him he's been able to come to meetings during the day and he's been able to um come into the office when we needed him and uh, I don't think he's missed many meetings. Maybe I don't think any. <laughs> here and there over the years. Sure. He lives in the city, and uh, he has his own business, so he can work around the assessor's schedule. And we're um, looking forward to working with him in the next three years. How many years have you been? Since 2007. Seven. Seven. So this will be my fourth okay. term. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Let's proceed with the election then. Shall we? Yep. Glad this is our last one. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Councilor Adams? I vote for Mr. Fulham. Councilor Carney? Uh, Mr. Fulham. Councilor Wright? Mr. Fulham, please. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Mr. Fulham. Councilor Wright? Mr. Fulham. Councilor Murphy? Mr. Fulham. Councilor Spector? Mr. Fulham. Mr. Schwartz? Mr. Fulham. Mr. Fulham. Congratulations and thank you again for the service that you performed for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joan. Thank you. Joan. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I'd like to point out that we're running this meeting ahead of time, that we've had to have these pauses. I'm just trying to get some credit for something. So uh, now comes the time where we recess for the Finance Committee and <coughs> pass the gavel over to Council Murphy, who is the chair. Thank you. Mary, would you call the roll of finance, please? Here. Here. Present. Here. So we have three financial orders tonight, which are primarily housekeeping as we are coming towards the end of the fiscal year. The first one is a budgetary transfer of $20,000 within the police department. And this is money that's in their budget, just going from personal services uh, to their ordinary maintenance. Um, and this is for technical services that they use vendors for. So it's not money that would be paid to their own personnel, but paid to vendors. And uh, the mayor is going to make himself available to answer any questions you may have about it. But again, it's $20,000 from within their budget going from personal services to ordinary maintenance because the technical services are provided by vendors, not by their employees. So any, any questions on this one? If not, a motion to recommend. Motion to recommend. Second. Second? Second? Okay. If there's no further discussion, then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. The second one <clears throat> is an appropriation of $8,743 from the FY13 General Fund undesignated fund balance to the Water Street Bridge Repair, a.k.a. the Raymond LaBarge Memorial Bridge at the end of Water Street. And DPW um, has about completed repairs, but they need a little more help for the bridge. And there's so a memo. That, uh, yeah, there's a memo in your package about that. The order is simply appropriated from the undesignated fund balance, free is, cash to complete the repairs of the water. Yeah, is it? Approved. Is it? Is that the what? The Raymond Barge Bridge, or is it the one on Mulberry Street? I think it's the one on Water and Reservoir Road, I believe. Okay. Is it? I don't. I don't think it's on Mulberry Street. Is na his name's in the water? <laughs> is his name in the concrete or what? That, no. that, that was no. just a little editorializing on oh. my part. Uh, <laughs> I remember at one point we were concerned that Council Barge would be trapped at home and couldn't attend council meetings because of the bridge. That's 
how long it's been kicking around, but no, I mean, I could ask the mayor. I think it's the one right on Reservoir Road and Water Street. That was why he bought the three yeah. bicycles so we could get over the hotel bridge. Exactly. Absolutely. He wasn't a big bicycler, as I recall. <laughs> no. no, he had a three wheeler. So, um, a motion to recommend and second? I second it. You second it? Okay, and Councillor uh, yep. uh, Tacey recommended. So, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And the third one is a financial order appropriating $7,000 from the FY13 general fund undesignated fund balance or free cash to central services um, their repair and maintenance of buildings fund for modifications to the office at Memorial Hall used by the veterans agent and uh, the veterans agent is now sort of a regional service they have more people right. working there and I believe don't we get a re that we have funds to help support this correct yeah, this is actually, though it's in our undesignated fund balance, it's actually funds from the from the regional veterans district. It, it's some excess funds that that uh, are a result of uh, the addition of two additional towns, um, Hadley and Middlefield, uh, who, who are now joining the district and paid some ser paid for some services uh, in this in this fiscal year. Um, and so the uh, district uh, communities met at their most recent meeting to discuss uh, how to use this excess funding. Um, and rather than uh, redistribute it back to the communities, it was agreed that because we needed to make some accommodations for additional staff for the expanded district in Memorial Hall, they all agreed that we could utilize that funding uh, to have central services make those uh, make those uh, renovations and in fact um, what my plan is uh, those of you who know where veterans affairs is currently located in that single office on the right hand side my plan is to relocate them across the hall um, into half of the space that's currently occupied by human resources um, there's a already two doors uh, and we would be constructing a, a separate wall uh, and uh, and creating some partitions uh, for their staff and in particular they have a need for uh, uh, for privacy to be able to uh, meet with veterans uh, to take private information and do counseling around benefits and they also as we know we're fortunate to have a lot of um, interns who work in the office and they're pretty much up to their ears in that little office that they have now with sort of surrounded by uh, filing cabinets and little tables that people are all trying to work on so we feel that this is a, a more adequate space for them and so this money will help us do those renovations and the other towns have agreed that that's an important expense so do we have a motion to recommend excuse me so the human resources will be on the opposite side correct mayor <laughs> uh, there's no motion I was going to move to uh, to uh, recommend and if we get a second, then we can proceed with the discussion. To recommend what? The motion. I move to recommend. What are talking about. Oh, <laughs> the appropriation. To recommend. Appropriation. So there's a second. Second. Okay. Very good. Yeah, so most of human resources is currently kind of on the left hand side as you're facing and then across the center. Um, there's one person, there's one desk over to the right hand side. So it will mean consolidating. Um, HR more over to the left hand side and they've are they're already working on that um, and and you may remember seeing there these these sort of these large uh, freestanding built-ins that uh, were basically coat racks for the old Council on Aging and all these cubbies and I think they removed them on the other side and they're going to remove them on this side uh, to create more of an open space and so so people will you know walk in it'll be a separate office people will walk in the door There'll be reception and etc. Um, but as as we're adding new staff, and I have to be clear so that we all understand, this is a district, so it's a you know it's a staff that's being paid for by the eight or nine member communities. Um, we just need to have the space for them and the computers for them to work out of. So I do know when Steve came to our Social Services and Veterans Affairs Committee for last month, he did mention about the two towns and also the district. Mm -hmm and also needing space yes and we did we uh, uh we applied for and received a community innovation challenge grant uh to tr to expand the district uh to help pay for uh m making hadley and middlefield new members 
members of the district, um, which is also important because it actually now will make the district fully contiguous. Um, uh, before Hadley was kind of a gap in the district. So, um, so we're going to be moving forward to f formalize the district in this new configuration. That's part of what the grant pays for. Um, and the district is, you know, was pleased to be able to use some of this money to, to expand the space. And it's all being done in-house uh, by our central, uh, uh, central services uh, and electricians, et cetera, uh, who will be doing all the computer drops and stuff like that. So, Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. yeah, the actual traffic in and out of the uh, Veterans Services Office has, is about 700% higher than it was just seven years ago. So, and they've been stuck in that little hole. <coughs> yep. So it's very well needed space. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Uh, what's going, I mean, if this is a regional project, will there eventually be a separate fund? That's, that, yeah, that's actually, um, that's where we'll be headed. And that's sort of what this year will be a transition year. Um, because when we, when we actually become, you know, it's, it's interesting because the, the state uses this, our veterans district as the model for veterans districts. Um, but technically, and it's been because of this uh, contiguous piece about Hadley, because the, the statute says that it has to be contiguous, we're, we're sort of a, a faux district. We've been a faux district. They use us as a model because we are, we are excellent at providing services and we meet the goals of a, of a, of a regional district. Um, but, but so now we're going to actually transition to become a true regional district. So in fact, what that means is that the, you will, we won't have the veterans uh, director, et cetera, will be coming right out of our budget. It will become its own entity, its own regional entity. So part of the transition with this grant is going to be to put setting up those uh, those systems, um, including figuring out you know they'll need their own accounting, et cetera. Uh, you know they'll have to be dealing with health insurance and and retirement. Most likely they'll join you know the re the retirement system, uh, Northampton retirement system like the housing authority does, and and they'll have access to health care either through Hampshire County or through us. Um, but they will. That's part of this transition that we'll be doing uh, using the Community Innovation Grant. So, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Then, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation? All right. Aye. 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 And that is the last item. So, we'll motion to adjourn by it. So moved. Second. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Back to the regularly scheduled portion of our program. We actually are. We're doing fine here. Uh, this is the budgetary transfer that you may have heard about recently. Um, this is the FY 2013 budget transfer for the police department that just came out of the Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And this is the $8,743 for what we'll call it the Water Street Bridge. Move okay. to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, this is $7,000 that the mayor just described to be appropriated for the FY13 uh, 13 general fund undesignated fund balance uh, to central services for the Memorial Hall modification for the Veterans District. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And this is upon the recommendation of the Conservation Commission. This is a be it ordered. Whereas the Open Space Recreation Multi Use Plan 2011 to 2018 recommends allowing farmers to farm some areas within conservation lands. <coughs> and whereas the Conservation Commission has issued <coughs> uh, licensed. Uh, has issued licenses, I believe, as opposed to license for growing and harvesting hay, corn, and other crops. T uh, tapping, which should have two P's, as opposed to taping maple syrup. Uh, raising bees and small timber cuts to support farming and working landscapes, enhance wildlife values, and keep land open where appropriate. And whereas all farm use allowed by licenses, which do not prevent any public access on the property, and whereas the Agriculture Commission supports such farming efforts, and now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council declares such agricultural rights 
surplus and authorizes the Conservation Commission and its agents to license such use for periods not to exceed five years in a single license. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Councilor Freeman Daniel. Yeah, can we recognize um, anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this? Because I, I believe the, that yeah. Wayne Fiden is present, so the motion is to recognize Wayne Fiden. If he's willing to speak in favor of it, I mean. <laughs> well, to speak to it. Um, is there a second to recognize? Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So just briefly, um, Conservation Commission has been doing this for about 30 years now. Um, Joe Cook, the city's procurement officer, said there's been a reinterpretation of the rules at the Inspector General's office, and we now need approval from city council. So we've been doing this routinely. Um, uh, Elwell Conservation Area, which is now Connecticut River Greenway, is for the longest. We do it on Sylvester Road at Mineral Hills. We have a few, few small places, I guess five, five leases we have right now, five licenses. What was that last sentence? We have, way. we have five licenses right now for various types of use. For Maple, maple sugar tap, tapping with two peas, um, and conservation areas anywhere from one acre of farmland up to about 16 acres of farmland. Can this be amended uh, before second reading um, to actually list the ones that the Conservation Commission wishes to license? Uh, it can. Um, the list changes from time to time. So, for example, we bought a parcel of land on Chesterfield Road, which had been in grazed, grazed land until about 10 years ago. We're looking at bringing it back. So we'd, of course, prefer to know that we can do that. We're spending a lot of effort doing that. So, so we have a current list, but it, it does grow from time to time. So I'm going to say it again. I'd like to see the list that the Conservation Commission wants to do before I vote to give the Conservation Commission blanket authority to grant farming to any location that they have. That's, that's my hope. Councilor Spector. I think you might have answered the question. So your fear is that the Conservation Commission will start granting. What's your worst case scenario? What are you afraid of? Um, I'm afraid of a neighborhood not being happy with farming being done on conservation land and uh, the city council granting the conservation commission. And that. so, so there's a layer we already have in place, which is a conservation commission. So you're saying what I don't trust is the commission to make a correct assessment that if neighbors came in and said, we don't want this to happen in our neighborhood, that the commission might, for some reason that is not rational or not appropriate, um, would not go along with those neighbors and would therefore say, we're going to grant it even though the neighbors don't want it. Uh, I'm not sure that the Conservation Commission is charged to listen to the neighbors when it comes to anything outside of their purview. So this body is an elected body. This body looks at all the interests in the city, not just the value of conservation land. So yes, that's, that's what I think is po very possible is that the commissioners Obey, uh, pay very close attention to their mandate, and they and the other concerns raised by the neighbors are not part of their mandate. Well, and that's so a, that's an interesting question. Maybe Wayne, you can answer that. Does, sure. Does the commission listen to input of public citizens on issues? They do. They don't. They don't necessarily get a veto. But for example, Montview uh, Avenue, we used to have a conservation area which yeah. leased to a farmer. The neighborhood wanted to manage it instead, and so we've turned that over to them. Um, we work with the neighborhoods as part of doing all these periods. So, so the normal process when we buy conservation land is we do a management, part, management plan for that conservation area. And the normal rule of thumb for the Conservation Commission is it is our preference that it's the city's role to preserve land and neighborhood's role to, to manage the property on a day-to-day -day basis. So the city tends to do management for the property until we find a neighborhood group who wants to take it over. And whenever possible, we would prefer to turn those things over to neighborhood groups. So usually the Conservation Commission is making a decision when there's not a neighborhood partner that's there. And when there is a partner, we would turn it over to them. Uh, point of information, Council Freeman Daniels, is it your desire to have the uh, Conservation Commission or the Planning Office petition the Council each time when they want to expand the list or modify the list? I think that's an excellent practice. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, actually, it w is that a proposed amendment that you were making? 
or were you is it a request I'm not quite sure how, uh, we, how we're going to classify this if it's a request it doesn't need a second if it's just a polite request if it's if it's an amendment then it will need a second and a vote it's a polite request I assume there'll be two readings on this and uh, I hope that it that uh, the Conservation Commission can amend it before the second reading um, and uh, and that's my hope. Uh, Councilor Carney, then Councilor Speck. Just a question. I'm just not real. I just want to be clear about why this is before us now in the first place. And I think you said the sole reason that we're looking at it now is because um, Solicitor Cook, or not Solicitor, um, Procurement, Officer. Procurement Officer Joe Cook uh, said that some state regulations allow with this to now be approved by the City Council. The, the past practice? So the current past practice, our understanding is we could do a three-year license without coming before you all. We had to come before you for a five-year license. We've come before you occasionally for a five-year license. We want to ask the farm <coughs> to invest a fair amount of money. In, in um, I gather there's been some ruling from the Inspector General that now we have to go to council for, for all of these. We can do it generically as we come once and not come back. So, so that's why going forward we're trying to have this authority. I guess this is a polite request to your amendment. Would you be willing to put that in? It sounds like it's a couple of phrases you want to add. And would you be willing to make sure you send those to the um, to the commission before the second read? I, I don't know about the timing. I don't know when the Conservation Commission meets. Um, but uh, I'm actually looking for a for a, an inventory of the of the parcels that the Conservation Commission wishes to, to grant agricultural uh, rights to. Um, again, this is this is a. I'm I'm willing to because I I um, I believe the Conservation Commission, in general, has the best um, interests of the of the land when they when they take votes. I'm willing to take the first vote on this, but um, this is a blank check. We're giving the, the a power that is vested in the council. That's, that's basically what uh, Director Fiden is saying. That the the Solicitor General now under or Inspector General now understands that this is a power that's vested in the council, who are the representatives of the people. So, this if we vote on this without seeing the inventory, we're giving that power it's in the form of a blank check to the Conservation Commission. And uh, I prefer to see an inventory of exactly which parcels that happens so that some of the powers, some of those rights of the citizens through the council are retained. Con uh, consultation with Council Labarge. <coughs> a lot of these conservation um, lands were supported by councilors directly uh, because of input from their constituents, such as forest, uh, river forest, things such as that, like the Bean Allard Farm through that area. Um, and they utilize those areas. They walk them and things such as that. So I, I'm not sure that I would like to say uh, yes to this without hearing from constituents and hearing from people that, or, that use these properties as it is right now. And so you would be taking that away from them who maybe supported it for for farming, which they could not utilize it at that point. No. So one of our basic rules, this, this land is public land. The reason the term here is license and not lease is we do not let any farmer grow any crop which requires exclusive use of the property. So we're talking about things like hay where people can walk across the property or uh, maple sugar tapping where people can walk across the property. So we are not willing to grant licenses. I don't think we could legally grant licenses that provide exclusive use of the property. Um, so it's, it, it's basically it's the properties as you see them now, Conservation Commission has, as I say, has been doing this for 30 years. So we're not talking about changing the nature of the property. There's not anywhere we'd be doing cutting down mature trees to do farmland. So the only place, so uh, it, it, we're certainly happy to give a list of where all the farm parcels are now so you can see them. The only place which we could be doing, which isn't currently farmed, is properties which we acquired, which are in the process of the trees marching up the hill and taking over, where we might be able to knock it its successional stage back 10 years, but they still look and feel like farmland. Um, there may be some areas, you know, we had one person who was a beekeeper 
who ended up not designing the property didn't work because it was too wet. The, uh, we have one person who taps maple sugar trees. So maybe things like that, which aren't cleared land. But when we're talking about cleared land, you all know where they are. If you drive around, yeah. you're going to see where those parcels are already. So you, you're basically talking about maybe an adjoining farmer with a piece of property could request permission to farm a piece that was close to his land that was adjoining. So, so yeah, I mean, I'll give you a quick list because there's not many of these. So at Connecticut River Greenway, what used to be called Alwell Conservation Area, off Damon Road, it's a 100-acre conservation area, 16 acres is leased to Enterprise Farms, Scott Jackson. Um, we've st we try to stay with the farmer as long as possible, but occasionally a farmer leaves, then we get a new farmer. Now, Scott's business is 10 or 15 miles away, so it's not nearby, but he's the only one we got there. On um, Mineral Hills Conservation Area on Sylvester Road, it's Parsons, who are in West Hampton, so they're coming, what is that, three miles yeah. around there. Um, at um, Manhan off Manhan Road in the Meadows, we own one acre of land. It's not worth any farmer, so the farmer across the street comes over and uses that. And, and all of these parcels, they have, they have public access? All public access, that's correct. Council of Barge. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne, on here it says, whereas the Agricultural Commission supports such farming efforts. Now, I know when we formed this Agricultural Commission, the former counselor from Ward 3, I and I forget who else was involved in it, but anyways, did they attend this when you were doing this um, order? So what we've now started doing is, since the Agricultural Commission's been in existence, four years, whatever it's been, as licenses come up, we come before them and ask for their advice. So um, when Parsons lease a license ran out, we went to them just last meeting, a month ago, and asked, did, did they think it made sense to renew with Parsons, or should we be looking somewhere else? When Scott Jackson's license came up, we went to them before that. So each time a parcel of land comes up, we ask them. Last night, uh, Kevin, um, who's the chairman of the Conservation Commission, came to a meeting with the Agriculture <coughs> Commission and sort of talked about what joint projects they do. And one of the things on the list was licenses specifically. Okay, thank you. So they're very aware of these and are supportive. Well, Councilor Carney? Just a question um, about the possible amendment that's not being offered tonight. It seems as though, looking at the language of the order, it would have to really be rewritten because it, in the now, therefore, it be ordered. Um, this order says that the city council declares such agricultural rights surplus and authorizes the conservation commission and its agents to license such uses for periods. It would seem really that that would need to be stricken. And um, so uh, it, to be go with the intent, what, they actually are withdrawn or that, that for process purposes, all licenses instead would only be granted by this body it, I don't mean I, to speak to the amendment now. Yeah. I just am just trying to get the if I understand the intent, request, that would it's, be good. it's about having a list. So I think the way we do it, because the where the therefore be it ordered, it says now such licenses could be granted. So I think the way we'd suggest for language, if you wanted to go that way, is we'd add a new whereas clause. That whereas Conservation Commission has farmland in, and we'd list those five or six parcels. As soon as you add that whereas clause, then the therefore be it ordered, which says that such agriculture rights to surplus would apply to the whereas clause. Uh, so but I don't, the, the only reason I ask that is I'm, I'm curious, since I won't be here at the next meeting too, and I'm curious as how that might meet the intent as expressed by Councilor Freeman Daniels, which is to actually withdraw that author, that, that presently we operate with granting the authority to the Conservation Commission and its agents to grant the licenses. And an amendment or, or a change would actually be to um, well, well to just vote no on this or to um, change the process entirely to have all licenses uh, just come come directly before the city council rather than to the conservation commission maybe be referred out to the conservation for input but it sounds as though the process that would be offered Has, oh no that's not my intention at all okay. I don't think uh, that is understood by adding a list because the city council would of course declare the agricultural rights of those parcels surplus 
and the Conservation Commission would then go ahead and, and license the such uses for, for whatever periods they uh, see fit not to exceed five years. But it, if there's a new parcel that mm -hmm. the city requ acquires, the Conservation Commission wishes to license it, they would have to come back with another order. Mm -hmm. And that, that order would just say, we'd like to also license the agricultural rights on this piece as well. And that would be that the council. If And if the citizens surrounding that uh, that that parcel had some significant issue about it. This this council could answer to the to them. Um, whereas if if we did it like this without that, then um, this this council would have no real um, authority other than rescinding the entire order, which could be a mess because you'd rescind all the license, all the surplus rights, and that that might be a real mess. So I, I see this as protecting our future. I understand. Uh, I understand the reasoning. I do understand the reasoning. What I'm curious about, through the chair, is that do you expect that this is what the intent of the Conservation Commission was when they sent this forward as a um, as an order upon their recommendation? And quite frankly, they would like as broad authority as possible. So it is yeah. certainly their request not to amend it, but they live with it. It's not unreasonable. I mean, if that's what council wants. We can absolutely, you know, it, it means coming back more often as we do new parcels. So okay. whatever's the will of council, we can work with. We, we do, if, if some of you remember, and this is probably more detail than you got into, but this body, along with the Agriculture Commission and the Conservation Commission, approved the open space and recreation plan two years ago, mm -hmm. and it specifically talks about small parcel of conservation within conservation areas we'd like to lease for doing it. So we certainly haven't been hiding this, but well, whatever's the will of council, we can live may, with. May I recommend, given that there's no way of projecting the will of the council unless we vote on an amendment. Uh, and if uh, Director Fiden has to go before Conservation Commission or is in the process of, or requested to draft amended language for this, I don't know. What's the council's pleasure here? Can I ask one question? Sure. When does the council, Director Fiden, do you know when the Conservation Yeah, they're meeting next Thursday. But I think the authority we have is broad enough that we would just give you a list of what we have now. That we know. We wouldn't know the question, you know, your concern. We don't know what might come down the line, but it's easy enough to give a list right now of the six areas we have. I think it's six. Thank you. So this is not burdensome, and, and you can bring it back. So as it stands, there is a request, and you can interpret whether you have the, the, the desire of the council expressed, um, and on second reading present a modified language that might reflect an inventory that also included. Um, any other discussion on this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So come back for a second reading with I meant to make some modifications. This is upon the recommendation of the City Council Finance Committee that the property at 140 Pine Street is declared surplus to city needs and that the mayor in consultation with the Finance Committee, is authorized to sell the property in accordance with state procurement laws. There's a motion. Second. And second. It. Discussion, please. Council Freeman Daniels, I see you ready. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the order here. Uh, and I spoke with uh, the procurement officer, Mr. Cook, today. And um, I also spoke with the council president. Um, and uh, the council president sent me the draft RFP th this this morning or this afternoon, and uh, I, I would like to know why that RFP isn't sort of included with this, or or if the RFP has been finalized, um, or if the RFP is a draft and has been finalized, I'd like to know why it has been finalized. I'd like to see the RFP finalized before the the council. When you spoke with uh, Officer Cook, did he uh, tell you the status of the RFP? He said there was a draft RFP. <laughs> uh, the mayor is recognized and welcome to speak to this point. And um, the RFP has actually been issued. Uh, it, it, it has been issued. Uh, Mr. Cook uh, believed under believes under state procurement law and. There is no one more cautious and careful about state procurement law than, than our city's procurement officer, that given the finance uh, committee's approval, uh, that we could go ahead and, and 
put it out there and that if we needed to make changes, we could make changes. But yeah. I'm sorry, let me correct okay. myself. He asked me if I'd seen the draft RFP. He didn't actually say there is a draft RFP. Oh, so that's, excuse me. So then, no, then okay. maybe he, I don't want to say that he misspoke. That he oh, no, 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 no. I just, what I meant was that he, we've, it's, uh, there was a, um, there was an RFP recommended uh, by the ad hoc committee and then ultimately the finance committee uh, sitting together. And so, um, so that's why that's been, we decided to get that out on the street. Um, and, then, uh, and then this order comes forward for the actual surplusing by the council. And if, if I may express, I'll be corrected, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels' concern that um, he's concerned about how you are bounded, uh, you are bound by the conditions of the RFP. If the, I think the concern is once this building is surplus, you can actually, I think, uh, uh, Procurement Officer Cook had suggested a possibility of an aerospace development project there that might go in. Um, he did seem to <laughs> say that. <laughs> it and and that, that, of course, does not conform with the expressed will in the RFP. And I, uh, so to, to what extent do we have uh, the assurance that, that the RFP will be the guiding principles for which you offer the building for sale? Um, I believe the, the language of the surplus order says that I will uh, work in consultation with the Finance Committee, um, and that is my intent. The Finance Committee, under our current structure, serves as the Property Committee, um, which is why we were, which is why we required first a surplus vote of the Property Committee and why we formed the Ad Hoc Committee to be an extension of the Property Committee. And so we, uh, so that's why the language is written that way, and this is actually fairly com common language in the way we surplus property. Um, some of you who are at Edlu know we were looking at a, a similar order from 2005 that required the mayor to, s to RFP and sell the property in consultation with another council committee. So, um, is this a follow-up, Councillor Adams? Has yet to speak. In this? That's fine. Uh, go ahead. Has this been to Edlu? Uh, it has been to the property committee. Uh, no. It's been, it has not. No. Um, now, so the RFP has been put out. It's been put out. That is correct. Have you received proposals? Uh, it has a closing date of 45 days, or I believe it's 45 days. So. Because I, I understand you said that uh, Mr. Cook stated that that's perfectly legal. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm curious if, if we haven't voted on this order yet, um, someone could submit a proposal. And hypothetically, if the order never passed council, then that would put us in a bad position. It seems like probably not a spectacular practice to. Well, I could actually ask Mr. Cook to uh, explain it at, at a future meeting. Again, he, he um, it was his belief that given the timing of the, of the central register publications that uh, getting it in the pipeline uh, and not missing another couple of weeks. If he could, if he could do that, or if certainly, could do be happy to by council memo to the council. That would be definitely. Yes. Um, I, Again, I, I was, I was frankly, um, I was surprised a little bit myself. But I, again, I can assure you, no one is more meticulous about these things. And well, I'm, he's, I'm sure he's an attorney he's, himself. Right. And so I'm he, sure if he says it's legit, yeah. it is. But I'm, it's, I'm just, con it Jason. just seems like mm -hmm. that if someone put out a proposal. Mm -hmm. In, in a certain well, we situation, can put out a proposal, and if uh, actually we are not bound to accept any proposals, and we are, we can actually withdraw a, an RFP at any time, and we could get a thirty um, request, and we could we could say we're not going to accept any of them. So we do always have that out; it doesn't uh, bind us. Uh, so I believe that was the the reason for it. Councilor Murphy, okay, oh, just follow. Councilor, can I just follow. Oh, sorry, you so follow. Make one more yeah. point. Yeah. I'll make it quick. Sure. Um, I, I would like to say that I do. I. I, I I read the RFP and I appreciate that um, that the property will be subject to a payment in lieu of taxes. Mm -hmm. So we were at I was at the Ryan Road budget town hall meeting the other night and someone brought up a good point about about those payment in lieu of taxes programs. So it's 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 good to know that that that, that will be mandated by this RFP. Definitely. Uh, Councilor Murphy and then Councilor Freeman Daniels. Well, one of the reasons that the the reuse committee and the finance committee was actually anxious to get going on this is that our leases with our current tenants run out in June and so we wanted to try and get a 45 day period in to get responses to the RFP so that potentially if we can identify a potential purchaser 
they could start to develop a relationship with the tenants, you know, because we're not really in a position to keep extending the leases. We give them a month to month extension, but we were hopeful that if in June we could have um, some bids and start a relationship between a potential high bidder and the tenants that would provide some security to them if they're going to be able to stay in the building uh, moving forward so that uh, by the time it comes to another heating season, maybe we could transfer the building. The tenants would have the security of knowing they've got a new landlord and everything could move forward. Um, and we, the other thing that we we're concerned with was the fact that uh, we are in tough financial times and we wanted to sort of reassure people that this isn't going to be one of those dollar transfers that, you know, the money that we get for the building is one of the important features of the RFP that we're not just going to give the building away, that we actually need the proceeds from the building. Um, there, we had the appraisal done and that's available to the public as well as our desires. But, uh, you know, payment in lieu of taxes and actually what we get for it's important because we uh, are very conscious of the city's bottom line in a tough budgetary period. So there any number of these reasons we wanted to move forward as quickly as we could both Gee, it would be nice to know for budget season if we had a successful high bidder it would be nice for the tenants to know that they'd have some security with a successful high bidder um, and, and that was a lot of what got us really moving quickly on this mm -hmm. uh, and and as far as the surplus is concerned we truly don't have a municipal use for the building so you know I don't I, we didn't so much see the issue is should we sell it or not we don't have a use for it and and it's pretty clear we should sell it it's just a matter of trying to get the best match we can for our our RFP and moving forward. Councilor <coughs> Freeman Daines. Well, uh, the mayor makes reference to the uh, previous surplus vote that was regarding the uh, failed hotel property, and that surplus vote had uh, some, or the surplus language uh, had some uh, conditions to it. This one doesn't. So this is why I'm sort of peering into this a little bit. Um, the RFP is already sent out. I um, and uh, so, so, so that <laughs> that's already um, the, the cows already. No, the RFP the can be changed. It's so it can completely be changed. Well, Mr. Cook uh, uh, felt confident that he could do that. Not a problem. So, oh, mm -hmm. he he just was. Uh, our, our belief was that the way the process had been structured is that there had been a recommended RFP, um, but the principal order that was given to by the finance committee was to. Um, that the mayor would be authorized to, to sell the property. So, so will the RFP be changed? Uh, uh, no, it will not be changed. Uh, again, what he was saying is we could release it. Um, if the council did have some uh, change of heart or decided not to sell the property or decided whatever, uh, then we could pull it off the street. Um, but the development of the RFP was the charge of the finance committee and the ad hoc property committee. Uh, so that's why we proceeded that way. So, I'm just trying to figure out. So well, sir, I, I guess I should be asking the finance committee um, or the ad hoc, the chair of the ad hoc committee, um, will the RFP be changed? I mean, will the RFP, uh, maybe I'm not understanding this. The RFP can be rescinded. Can it be rewritten? Can it just be rewritten? And then. Well, we spent several months writing it as a committee with public input and. Uh, and, and the procurement officer's input, and the committee voted unanimously, both committees voted unanimously to approve it. So, um, so it probably will not be changed. The, uh, I, I can't speak for the members of the committee, so. The, the, um, in the absence of any bidders, and if, if the, the building's remaining fallow and no response and the RFP is considered to be too restrictive, it could be modified in order to make adjustments and that is the understanding that that reverts back to the property committee, aka the finance committee, to redesign and recraft an RFP in order to make the property sellable? Uh, Councilor Tacy. We were, we were pretty, we took great pains in not being so restrictive on this RFP so as to attract a broad range of bidders, as many as we possibly could, which included things such as a, a historic preservation which does not have to be um, adhered to uh, things such as that and if, if somebody the highest bid that we get with this present RFP is a dollar we will most definitely rewrite it um, you know we're not gonna let it go for 
for peanuts, and we want to make sure that what we do get for it is the best bang for the buck <coughs> for the stakeholders in the city of Northampton. So if it comes into the dollar, and then the pilot program was if it got sold to a nonprofit, they would have to pay taxes. Because not only do we want to get money for the building and the piece of property, we want to get tax revenue. And if we can't get tax revenue, we even put a pilot um, in there, which is in the real estate agreement also. So great pains were taken to see that we get the best bang for the buck on this. And it can be, and the RFP would be changed if somebody bid at a dollar. If the high bid was a dollar, it would be changed. I could guarantee it. It's okay. You're Anyone else? Uh, Councilor Adams. Okay. Um, do you have the RFP in front of you? Uh, I'd have to call it up. Uh, I, I, don't, don't worry. No, I, I, just, I just had a question, but I don't want to. I'm going to I'm going to send you the draft right now. No, I have it. I oh, you got the draft. Oh, oh, it's final it. finalized RFP. Yeah, but I I, just, I, I won't get. You can it. ask the question. I can. Well, I, I was just curious about with the evaluation evaluation criteria. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the that cr the criteria listed are either extremely important or essential, and 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 I was wondering how, in in the criteria itself, it says that proposers agree that the contents of their propose uh, their proposal proposers shall bind future purchasers of the property. Now. Does that require covenants? I mean, how, how could we, how could, how could. Yeah, I, I might address that. Um, the, we can only restrict the use of the building for about 30 years. What that does is if, if we pick a successful high bidder and they do what we want, and then 10 years in they decide to flip the building and sell it to somebody else, that that new purchaser would be bound by the commitments of the original purchaser or the length of time that we can restrict it. So if we can restrict it for 30 years, and it changes ownership after 10, it's understood that the next purchaser would be bound by the commitments of the first purchaser for the following 20 years or as long as we could restrict it. That was the intent of that. Um, and, and again, um, I'm, I'm, I think I can speak for the committee to say that we're really comfortable with the RFP and we're gonna stick with it unless we don't get any bids, in which case, yeah, we're gonna go have to back, go back and revisit the RFP, see what, why we didn't get any bids and then see to what extent we wish to modify the RFP and put it out again. But it, it is our prevailing hope that this, that this expresses our desires and is general enough that we're going to get some decent bids and that we can do business in a time period that's respectful for the existing tenants and our desire for the building and move forward with it uh, and get the building into new hands, you know, before the fall. I was just going to say a great example of that would be the Sullivan School building, which yes. that's a building that did change hands at least once in the 30 years, and the, and the restriction on providing the Center for the Arts for the full 30 years was transferred to the, to the, new, to the new owner of the uh, building. And Joe, Joe Cook indicated that we can't put in perpetuity covenants. So uh, as, he, as, as Councilor Murphy said, it's 30 years max out. Councilor Tacey. 30 years by line. And the road to heck is paved with good intentions. They said heck. Whoa. So uh, anyway, uh, which is what happened with the hotel. To meet the we had an RFP that really was too specific and it ended up costing us a fortune. So, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. My conversation with Mr. Cook today um, also revealed that uh, because this piece of property is subject to a request for proposals that the full council will have to vote on a deed transfer. So um, I was uh, gratified to hear that, that the council will see again the results of, of, the, of the workings of the finance committee and the mayor. So I, I, um, I wish that I had seen this RFP a little earlier, but uh, I, I think it's, um, it's, 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 it's worth voting. Uh, the question's been moved. Um, so roll call? Yes. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 Okay. So first reading. I'm trying to get back online to send you that. Take your time. Doesn't matter. Damn internet. I said damn. 
Um, this upon the recommendation of the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission uh, ordered that whereas the Open Space Recreation Multi-Use Plan 2015 to 2018 recommends the preservation of open space in urban areas along the Mill River Greenway and whereas the Planning Board as a condition of a master plan <coughs> approval at other permits at the former State Hospital Village Hill and other permits has required conservation restrictions and other open space preservation measures for Village Hill parks and open space. And whereas any such conservation restrictions would be donated to the city for no consideration. Now therefore be it resolved, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton acting through its Conservation Commission to accept said conservation restriction and hereby approve said conservation restrictions at the former state hospital also known as village hill move to approve second okay there's a motion wayne. and wayne wayne second. you want to step up here i've already been recognized <laughs> you get a haircut i did yeah. go, bud. so this may or may not be used it gives us authority um if if those of you've been in council for a while remember you've already approved two things the state hospital you approved the conservation commission to accept the open space on the outside of the development of the State Hospital to be transferred to them eventually. And you've accepted us accepting either easements or lane and fee for the bike paths that cut through there. Um, the, the city's position in the past has been the land on the edge of the State Hospital project could eventually be public land. It adjoins the State Hospital land. It's great for the public to use. The land, the small parks within Village Hill feeling as though should not come to the city, they should remain to be owned um, as part of the project, but just have a conservation restriction so they're guaranteed to be open space forever. I, I know it's in here, but you be specific when you said it will eventually be transferred to them? Oh, I'm sorry. Them. Um, either uh, the Homeowner Association or Hospital Hill uh, development. So we, most like the Homeowner Association eventually. Okay. That would be but up to them to figure out the structure. For the record. To the developer to figure out the structure. So again, the idea would be what feels like small neighborhood parks, there's not a city interest in owning, we don't want to maintain them, but we just want to make sure that they're there. How, how, how big are these areas, is it? Um, right now there's two, there's something called the Oak Park, which is less than an acre, probably half an acre. Um, and there's the Beaches Park, which is maybe an acre of that. And all of these have public access? They're open to the public, that's right. Yeah. They're not so public. could these fall under the order yes. of farming? No, because they wouldn't be publicly through? owned. Okay. These would, Just be, check. These would have conservation restrictions. Right. Conservation restrictions, basically, conservation restrictions does not give the public any rights to the property. So they would be owned by the developer or owned by the homeowner association. Okay. This would just say these were approved by the planning board with the condition they remain as open space forever. We now need a mechanism to make sure they, in fact, stay as open space for. Okay. Could somebody tap all those trees around the Beaverbrook Estates subdivision? The owner could. The owner could, right? The owner. Right. But isn't the city, or is that just a conservation restriction that was granted to the city, but not the land? That's correct. Conservation restrictions do not give us any ownership right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, council. Sorry, it should be clear. Conservation restrictions give us an ownership right in terms of preventing them from developing the property. So it is a kind of ownership right, but we can't actually do anything on the property. You actually hold the building rights. We, we separate the building rights. Right. Correct. Yes. Okay. I'm fine. You're fine. Any other questions? Um, and this is granting conservation restrictions, so this we can do this by voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. This is second reading. Uh, this is the historical uh, uh, restriction that was described for the Florence Grammar School. You want me to waive reading? Waive reading. Okay. Um, I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. It's moved in. And seconded. Uh, any discussion on the uh, councilor? Well, oh, just uh, just a reminder on this one. Um, we'll have RFPs in June, and um, this authorizes the mayor to do the restriction. But the mayor has agreed to wait to see if the high bidder actually wants this. 
because in this instance the underlying zoning permits many uses without it so if, if the highest bidder doesn't want it we don't have to do it if the highest bidder does want it we can do it this simply puts the mayor in a position to execute it if the high bidder wants it. it's an enabler as opposed to a restrict see thanks uh, any other discussion Thank you. I, I thank the council for waiting till the RFP was uh, <laughs> sort of sent out, <laughs> draft, <laughs> draft slash finalized before, before we voted. On. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, I don't think so. We don't. The, the charter doesn't require a roll call for that unless there's one that's requested. Sounded pretty damn unanimous to me. I said, "Damn again." Just Sorry, folks. Children are watching about at home. Structures that hold water. Children may be watching at home. As an act of punishment for something. I'm not sure, but <laughs> that's why I said hey, earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you didn't finish your peas. You have to watch the council meeting. <laughs> this is a this is a first reading. It's upon the recommendation of Councilor Specter, um, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, uh, providing that the code of ordinances. Uh, be amended by revising section 312-102 of said code providing that schedule one parking prohibited at all times be to ordained by the city council of the city of northampton in city council assembled as follows that section 312-102 of the code of ordinances of the city of northampton be amended so that such sections shall read as follows uh barrett place most westerly end of the entire length that should be added to uh, the section. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion, Councilor Specter? You. Want to talk um, this has been actually seems simple, but it's been a long process. Essentially, we're making these changes for safety reasons, so emergency vehicles can move more easily in that area. So I hope you'll approve. Our place is a dead end street. It's a dead end street. Um, of the, of the and actually, let me just say one other thing. I think this has brought up a discussion that's taking place now in parking or public safety, and I think it's important to look at what's happening is we're looking at all the dead-end streets now um, in the city and what problems there might be on any of those in terms of uh, emergency vehicles having access and turning around. So far, uh, the work of the DPW has shown that the vast majority, there's not going to be a problem. This is pretty unique. There might be one or two other streets that in other wards, as a matter of fact, we're going to have to look at this. But most of the dead end streets, there isn't the same problem that we have on, on Barrett. You, you modified unique. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. <laughs> you, <laughs> you pointed out the last time I did that. <laughs> this, uh, actually, I'm a little foggy now on the, um, on the process, I, I believe that the Transportation Parking Commission did recommend this. So yes, you did. So um, we would also the commission would also be a, a rec this is upon its recommendation and uh, does not need to be referred. Uh, we we met. Uh, we had actually two meetings that uh, had this on the agenda, and we discussed it at both. Uh, it, from that, we are looking at a, a lot of dead end streets, but this really. Is um, is a uh, gray area around parking, not on parking kind of um, in the middle of the street. Uh, so we're we're we are actually um, pretty much voting tonight to uh, prohibit parking in the middle of Barrett Place, uh, which you'd think that that was kind of common sense that that but. We actually have people who park in the middle of Barrett Place, so we're now we're, we're hopefully parking, uh, park, uh, restricting parking in the middle of, of, the, of the street. Yeah. We're talking about Barrett Place, not Barrett Street, just for people watching at home who might be suddenly stricken with terror. You also can't park in the middle of Barrett Street. Yeah, <laughs> actually, we, we recommend that you not park in the middle of any street. Or Henshaw. An ordinance to that effect, <laughs> maybe you can look into that. but. Um, the uh, uh, the motion is. I first. I did first. Okay, but is is uh, Councilor Murphy? Well, I know I've in in all the time I've represented Ward Five until just recently I never had a parking issue, but I have one now, and it you know we all know how residents get concerned about parking in their neighborhood, 
and every now and then we all get asked to help them do something about it and I'm happy to support Ward 2's need for uh, fixing a parking problem. Ward 2 has always led the way yes. in park. parking problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, I, as I understand, this parking problem is presented as a concern out of uh, the ability for emergency vehicles to, to have access to homes that would otherwise not have access on a dead-end street. Is that the... Uh, kind of. Kind of. It's, it's to have the ability to, have to turn around. For emergency for vehicles, emergency vehicles for, everybody? for emergency vehicles. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, we received a, a letter from the uh, pl from the chief of the fire department, um, who uh, informed us that it that it would be difficult to turn around uh, apparatus and uh, and even ambulance, um, in in the end of Barrett Place where, with parking, in the particular place that we're prohibiting it. And there's there's no cul-de-sac on Barrett Place. It's just a no. It's actually literally a dead end street. Right. It's a, it's a dead end. Like a hammerhead at, at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Apparently not big enough for an ambulance or a fire truck. So. <laughs> Technical. <laughs> All right. All those in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. This is going to require a, a roll call. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Aye. Councilor Dwight. Yes. 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 Okay. And the second reading? <coughs> Three old Yankees. That's the first reading. This is the second reading. Yes, that was the first reading. That will come back to us. This is the second reading for this. I'm sorry, I premature announcement. This is um <coughs> I'm sorry, this is the uh, Community Preservation Committee's powers and duties, the second reading. Move to approve. Is there a second? second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call. Well, it says ordinance at the top. <laughs> I know. You know what we do when it says ordinance at the top? <laughs> besides eight dams? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 It is passed in second reading. This is also second reading for the rezone parcels of East Hampton Road from BP to SR to GI to help uh, fulfill the business park vision. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, stop. 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 Roll call. See, this is a roll call here. Oh, what you <laughs> Yes. 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 This is also in second reading, and this is the language regarding home occupation to be amended consistent with the current home business classification. Roll call. I need a, a move a motion. Second. Second. Just any, a any discussion? <laughs> Second. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Stafford. Yes. Councilor Short. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Aye. Councilor Burke. Yes. This is uh, the ordinance to amend. 350J, uh, water supply protection, larger accessory structures allowed, addressing mistakes, and attached garage setbacks, uh, relaxing f uh, photovoltaic structure standards. I'll accept a motion. Vote approved. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Casey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Yes. Yes. This is a uh, second reading consistent with sustainable Northampton minimized permit review. Also add recording requirements. Move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Short. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. 
is also second reading. This is the site plans approved with special permits be recorded with the decision. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Mary. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. Murphy? Yes. Yes. Second reading on this as well. A new non-conforming aspects to already existing non-conforming single or two-family homes be allowed by special permit consistent with recent court rulings on the matter. Move, Move to approve. approve. Second. Any discussion? Mary? Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Aye. Councilor Yes. Okay. Yes. Also in second reading, this is the to increase the height limits in office industrial, general industrial, and central business district by five feet. Second. Second. Any discussion? You ready? Yep. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Yep. Yes. 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 This is second reading. This is the amendment to uh, general advertising sign billboards may not be reconstructed to contain electronic technology. As Move to approve. Second. Any discussion with this? Councilor Freeman Daniels. And this was as amended. At as the a, yeah, as, as I said, amended. this is as amended at the last uh, right. discussion. Are you okay? It's as good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's as good as it could be. It, it, it could. We could refer it back and so on and so forth. Forget. It's not the prettiest thing on the planet, but. Any other sentence. discussion? I'm sorry? It's a complete sentence. I'll give it that uh, properly <laughs> spelled. In, uh, excellent. Um, roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Bard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Take those. Second reading on this. Yeah, is this a referral? I'm sorry. Yeah, this is referred to refer to the committee on uh, elections, rules, ordinances, orders, and claims. Uh, the parking prohibited at all times at Hockenham Road, Fair Street Extension. Move to refer. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The abstentions? And this is also to refer to ordinance. Um, this is to expand the historic district to include much of Round Hill. So moved. Second. All right. uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. I'd like to amend this to also refer to Edlu. Uh, the request is to I'll also refer down. to Edlu. And it's been seconded. <coughs> Any other comments? All right. The, the vote is to refer to Edlu and ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the I have no updates to offer. Are there any from committee chairs? I, actually, I do have an update. Coming yes. next time will be in uh, something on the agenda about setting up the special committee that the charter demands that we do. And there's going to be a little bit. I just want to give you a heads up. There'll be a little bit of a committee time on crunch. Com committee on compensation. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage you to read. I will send the ordinance that is going to come forward. If you could read it before the meeting, that would be great. Um, and I will not be here at the next meeting, but two esteemed members of the committee that where we talked about it, it will be here and will they can update you on it. But just so you know, that's coming and a timeline will be put in place. And it was my mistake. I thought it was going to be on the agenda this week. I don't know why. There was some confusion in terms of the communication with the mayor's office. I thought it was going to be on. So. But still within the still conforming we're still to the within it. I'm going to yes. I'm I'm going to make sure that it doesn't need. It's going to need to be referred. I believe it will need to be referred out. It might need just a heads up. We might need to move this along at some point. It might have to have a second reading when it comes back. Sorry about that. Any other announcements? Yeah. Um, no. Well, this would be new business. Okay, so uh, well, well, that's our next item. So, what's the new business? I, I just wanted everybody to uh, pay particular attention to page six in the beacon that you got in your package. 
and I'll just take one second for those home. This is the sequestration. Uh, the federal cuts amount to approximately 42 billion overall in the current federal fiscal year, including approximately 97.5 million in cuts to programs in Massachusetts that are implemented at the municipal level. The Massachusetts cuts include 13.9 million from primary and secondary education funding and an additional 13.4 million in funding for teachers and aides who work with students with disabilities. Head Start will lose 9.6 million in funding, eliminating services for over 1,100 children statewide. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program will face an $11.2 million cut, and Community Development Block Grant grants will see a $7.2 million cut in Massachusetts. That was, um, and I should point out that that actually doesn't qualify as new business, but that would have certainly qualified in the announcements of uh, yeah. earlier on. But in, as said, I think that's important information to share. And so I appreciate that. And just going forward, we'll do it that way. So um, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.